So we're here to discuss OSPF operational states. And the key focal point is on the progression that OSPF takes from beginning and activating on an interface to having multiple OSPF routers reaching convergence. And to complete this convergence, we have seven states to go through. OSPF will transition from a down state to an init, from an init to a two-way, from two-way to X start, from X start to exchange, exchange to loading, and finally loading to full. We're gonna walk through these states as we go through, so let's get started. When we first begin our discussion of OSPF and these operational states, we need to focus on OSPF activation. OSPF is going to be enabled on an interface. And when OSPF is enabled on an interface, your OSPF router must then determine if there's another OSPF neighbor on that same link. And to do it, we start in the down state. And then when we go to send a hello, we're going to start to initialize. And we say hello to a multicast target of 224.005. My router ID is 172.16.5.1. That's a 32-bit value from router R1. And it asks, is there anyone else on this link? Well, in order for us to stay in the initialized state or in it, we need to get a response back. Because right now, we're going from OSPF has been activated, we're in a state of called down, to initialize by sending a hello. Now, when we get a hello back, we stay in the init state because we have seen someone else on this OSPF activated link. We've received a hello from R2. Also, R2 has added information into its message saying, I have a new neighbor. I have a neighbor known as R1. They have IP address 172.16.5.1, and they exist off of my interface gig01. When R2 sends its hello back, it's responding to us, and it's going to be sending it as a unicast, targeting our router1 IP address of 172.16.5.1. Now the neat thing is, since R1 has received a hello back from R2, and R1 sees itself in this neighbor list of R2, we're going to transition to the two-way state. R1 has received a hello from router 2, and in that hello it includes R2's neighbors, which also is R1. And since we see our own router ID in R2's neighbor list, we can transition to what's known as the two-way state. Now, with this two-way state, we want to talk here about an election that will occur, and this election is for a DR and BDR role-based routers. This election only occurs on multi-access networks, networks such as using Ethernet. In this election, our routers will have a default priority of 1 on their links, and because the priorities are both defaulted at 1, it's a tie. So the tiebreaker goes to what's known as the highest router ID. In this case, R2 has 172.16.5.2 as its IP address, and that is its router ID it's taken. It has the higher router ID, so R2 will become the designated router. R1 has a lower router ID because it has a lower IP address. It is 5.1. That would be the backup designated router, known as the BDR. Our routers will then move onwards from the basics of that two-way state and the election, and they're going to go on to what's known as their synchronization process for their OSPF database. What we're focusing on here is synchronizing their link state databases, which is really their topology table. And to start this synchronization process, we use the X start state. In the X start state, this is the exchange start state, we have our routers choosing who's going to share their link state database first. Now, that link state database is known as the DBD packet, which is going to be a summarized form of their link state database. And in that exchange start state, the two routers pick out who goes first, and then the router that says, all right, I have the highest, so I will send my database description packet over to R1. Now, the cool thing is, it's a summary. It's a link state database, and the R1 router is going to acknowledge that it's received that summary. OSPF likes to be reliable. R1 then sends its own summary of its link state database, and R2 says, awesome, cool, I've got your summary as well, and responds with an acknowledgement. After we have viewed each other's summary, their database description packet, the routers will then respond back to each other with LSRs and LSUs. An LSR is a link state request. We can ask for more information on specific network entries that we've seen in those DBD packets that we didn't know anything about. 
The other router that receives your request would then respond accordingly with an LSU, which is a link state update, saying here's the info you needed. And again, OSPF likes to be reliable, so we have the acknowledgement coming into play. Now, the cool thing is, after all those LSRs and LSUs, you've reached full convergence. So let's take a step back. When we have this DR and BDR relationship coming into play in that two-way state, why is it there? Why is it important? Well, what we have are multi-access networks. And multi-access networks are commonly when we have Ethernet connectivity in between our routers. And in this case here, we have four routers with a switch interconnecting them. So what's the big deal? Well, this is going to create multiple adjacencies. What we have here is every router has an adjacency with every other router. What that really means is every router is making sure it has a full converged state between itself and the other three routers. This is insane as it gets into larger and larger topologies with more and more routers. Because with every extra adjacency, we now have excessive link state advertisements, which are messages, in between our routers. Also, if there's any change in our network, we're going to have extensive flooding. So let me show you. So router R2 here has a change, and it sends out its link state advertisements, notifying all of its other adjacent routers, which is all other four routers. Now, those routers do their job, and they also notify all of their adjacencies that they've made with other OSPF routers. Now, check it out here. OSPF is doing its job, and it's doing it correctly, but look at all the excessive LSAs where each router is notifying every other router. What if we could do it better? Well, we can. By having a DR and a BDR elected inside of a multi-access network, we can have our router 1, router 4, and router 5 literally have a full state only with the DR and BDR. And router 1, router 4, router 5 will only have a two-way state with each other. They won't concern themselves with having the exact same topology table as each other router. So let's see what happens. So R1 has a change. R1 only notifies the DR and the BDR, saying, I have full convergence with you, here's the change. From there, the DR accepts that change, and then it notifies all of its routers that it has a full state with, which is everybody. But routers 4 and 5, they don't notify each other, because they only have a two-way state with each other, and a full state with the DR and BDR.